I think what I love about it is that eventually my name will come off of it and there's going to be some other young man or young lady who hopefully picks up an album that I was a part of and was inspired by it and hopefully their journey was you know, intersected at a certain point in life where they decided I want to do that with my life. I would love it if one day that person is sitting in my seat and getting to fulfill what they feel like God is calling them to do. This is the Hillsong Creative Podcast, where we hear from creative experts, influencers, dreamers, and doers, what they've learned and what we can learn from their journey as we explore, respond, and create. Hi, I'm Rich Langton, and if you're new around here, welcome to the podcast. And if you've been listening for a while, welcome back. It's so good to have you along. On today's episode, I interview Leighton Ching, who is the art director and lead graphic designer for Six Steps Records. Leighton works with Louis and Shelley Giglio, and he's created so much artwork that you would know uh, for many Christian artists, including Chris Tomlin and Crowder, Matt Redman, and of course, the Passion Conference and Passion City Church. He's a great guy and a good friend, and I know you're going to love this interview. So let's get into it. So Leighton, I guess you and I have been friends like kind of online right, right. Um, for a long time. Yeah, for And a, I think, um, uh, I don't know how many years, but... Probably back 2010, maybe around then. I know the uh-huh. first time we met, you were on tour as a tour pastor with uh-huh. Hillsong Live. Yeah. And you did an event in Gwinnett Arena. In, in Georgia, and we threw an after party at Chris Tomlin's house. Yeah. And everybody came over, and I think that's when you and I first connected. Uh huh. Yeah, I remember it like it was yesterday. Yeah, I feel like too. it was. Um, and ever since, I've, I guess I've been blessed by your generosity. You know, obviously, whenever an album comes out, you'll always send one to us and yeah. make sure that we're we're a part of it. And I, I don't know, um, I guess I've never had the opportunity to say this, but for me, that's been such a blessing because I'm a fan, you know. Yeah, <laughs> like, awesome. I love worship music and I love what God is doing through passion and and through the, you know, in his church, through worship. Yeah. Um, and so to be able to connect with you guys and to be, I guess, to be blessed with the music all the time and to be seen yeah. um, is pretty great. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Mm-hmm. We feel um, the similar things. Like, I feel like over the past five, ten years, um, there's just been this partnership and this, mm-hmm. this familial bond that we've had mm-hmm. with Hillsong and Passion City Church. Um that things like that is easy because you're family to us mm-hmm. in the same way that you guys send us albums. We mm-hmm. want to do the same thing and just um, champion each other and support one another to just encourage us hear the songs coming out of, coming out of our church mm-hmm. yeah. and we're hoping that you're blessed by it. Yeah, yeah, love it. It's awesome. So I read somewhere, maybe it was on Instagram, that, <laughs> um, <laughs> that you grew up as a military kid. I did, yeah. Tell us yeah. about that. Um, so... I grew up in Hawaii, so I was born in Honolulu, Hawaii, and my my dad died when I was two months old. Right. He had cancer, and he died when he was 23 years old. Um, so my mom had my older brother and myself, and um, a, a two years after my dad died, she remarried, and she remarried a soldier in the Army. Wow. So at that point in life, we I was two, maybe three years old, and my brother was five years old, and we started moving around um, military lifestyle. Every three years, we'd move to a new army base. That was not the story that I was expecting. <laughs> what, what were you thinking? It was? I, I didn't realize that your father had passed away. That was the part that I, I was not realizing. And yeah. then I guess then to go on to be a military family and yeah. then move around. Yeah, we every three years we moved. So we moved from... Um, we left Hawaii and mm. went to Kansas, yeah. which is probably one wow. of the worst places you can go to when you, you're leaving like Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii yeah. right, to the middle of the United States where it's just flat and dry and desolate. Uh, we left Kansas and then we moved to Germany. Wow. And then after Germany, we moved to California and then back to Germany and then back to California. Right. So then in that all of that moving around, how did that shape who you are now? Mm. I thought about this quite a bit, actually. I think because um, we lived a lifestyle where you had to make friends really quickly mm. um, and you had to leave friends that you either had to decide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to decide to make friends and go as deep as I can immediately. Mm. I think we didn't have the luxury of having 20 years of friendship and solid friendships to, to really put down roots and mm. establish you know, incredible relationships. You had to decide, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to go as deep as we possibly can, mm. um, as quickly as we possibly can, because... Even though I moved to an army base this year, 
one of your best friends, one of your best mates that you meet could possibly mo be moving the next year or right. maybe two months later. Mm. So you just never knew. Mm. Uh, I think that's what shaped a lot of who I am today, which is why I love, when I love meeting people, I just want to skip all the, the general <laughs> stuff, you know, right. and just and get to who are you as a person and mm. um, how are we connecting as a mm. person and, and try to establish roots really quickly. Yeah. Now, I find that interesting now that I know that you moved around a lot because I also know that you, you've you been on staff nearly 10 years yeah. for passion. Yeah. So you've been committed and there for <laughs> a long time. Yeah, definitely. Um, do you think that's because of like moving around so much as a kid or? Yeah, I think I think when you move around a lot as a kid, um, it's not up to you. So you just get orders and you just follow wherever your parents are assigned. Yeah. And as an adult, and I moved to Atlanta and um, came on board with Passion City Church, I think that was my decision to say that even though my life is used to moving around and being transient, that it's my decision to place roots here mm -hmm. and and stay where I feel like God is planning me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so then when or how did creativity and design come along? Yeah, I think I was always creative growing up. I was always drawing or painting and sketching. And I didn't realize that you could actually do that until college age. Uh -huh. uh, I remember my first time encountering passion was I moved to Atlanta um, the summer after my my high school year, just for the summer. Mm. And uh, some friends invited me to church and to a Bible study that uh, Pastor Louie put on. It was called 722. And I went to this Bible study, which was 2,000 people. So it's just like a regular um, church gathering of young people and was enamored by everything because at that point, that was 1999, Nobody really was doing anything like that in Atlanta, mm. and it was something so fresh and new. And I remember buying my first album there from Passion. It's called Passion Better Is One Day. And I remember okay. the cover, yeah. the songs on it, um, everything about it, like, lit me up. Yeah. It, it was amazing. I, I remember taking out the, the CD cover um, and, like, reading through every lyric, reading through the liner notes, seeing who the art director was, who the designer was, the photography. Um, and just thinking to myself, whatever this is, I, I want to do something like this. Yeah. Looking back at it now, it's not one of our best works. <laughs> it, it's, it's a weird album cover. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's something that really cap captivated me at the time mm. and just put me on a course where I just knew in some heart that I wanted to do something with worship and design at the same time. And, um, and I just had it in my hand, you know, this little plastic jewel case yeah. that encapsulated everything that I feel like God put in me of right. loving worship music and loving art and design. Uh -huh. and, um, and I was holding a little booklet in my hand. Yeah. And so then did you study design or? No, I studied communications. Okay. And after, so I, had a, I have a weird like trail to get to um, Passion and Passion City Church. Yeah. I, I went to work for the Army. And uh, one of the first jobs I had was a crossing guard. <laughs> I was a crossing guard and I let kids cross the street and mm. I would just bring a guitar out there and I didn't play guitar, but I'd just be the uh, the young dumb guy that was just playing as I crossed the street. Like and, the musical crossing guard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and like kids loved it. And like parents loved it, it was great. It was probably not the safest thing. Right. You know, I was holding one stop sign and like playing with the other hand. Yeah. Did you get uh, tips or anything? <laughs> no, no I, I probably would have continued longer if I did get right, tips. Right, yeah, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so I did that for a while, and then I took a job as a marketing intern okay. uh, for this uh, thing on the base we are on, Fort Irwin, called MWR, and I was a marketing intern there, and because of that job, was just exposed to, like, Photoshop. Right. So I started learning um, just the basic uses of Photoshop, and the way that the Army works is that you kind of move up in, uh, in ranks, like just within the within their system, yeah. and you get promoted and move up, and I eventually became the director um, of marketing on this army base in the middle of nowhere, California, Fort Irwin, and because of that, I had to learn like every employee's job, mm -hmm. and so a lot of my time was spent just on Photoshop and tutorials and blogs, mm -hmm. just teaching myself how to how to use it. Yeah. Wow. So I made a lot of really terrible things, <laughs> uh, like posters for, for football camps. Yeah. Um, and I, this is back in the day when, like, you put a bird on everything. Uh -huh. So there'd be football posters with, like, birds <laughs> flying. Random birds. Yeah, and, like, swirls. Mm -hmm. it's, it, it's really embarrassing now. But at the time, I thought it was really progressive. I'm like, man, right. just wait until you see yeah, this, this out in the wild. this is going to be big. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You have no idea what's coming. Yeah. So then at that time, who, who were some of your, like, who did you look to or, or Obviously online and yeah. all that, but but did you have people that that you sort of 
thought, ah, oh, they're doing what I want to do. I'll, I'll look to them or artwork that you, you know, that resonated with you that you tried to not copy but yeah. emulate. Yeah, there was this one guy whose name is Scott Hansen. Mm-hmm. Um, he's still around. He, he's operating under the name Tycho now, and he's a musician. Right. Um, just an amazing musician. Yeah. And you, you've probably used some of his music for, like, walk-in music. Right. Or, I know we've used it at Passion quite a bit, um, but he's just a phenomenal designer and artist, mm. uh, musical artist. Yeah. So he was one of them for sure who kind of yeah. influenced me. I, I would figure out how he did his stuff, like, and try to replicate it uh-huh. and just try to, like, learn the different techniques that he would do. Yeah. So I remember him very clearly. And some of the other ones I probably shouldn't have <laughs> tried to emulate. <laughs> right. That's what Whoever ended started up with the that swirls and thing. the birds. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, so then... We- you must have had some some gifting, you know. Obviously, God had put something on your life for yeah. design and for being able to see things and imagine things. Yeah. But then you put it you you put in the work. Really, it sounds like of learning the tools and learning mm-hmm. the trade. Yeah, I think a lot of that was if if I didn't work for the army and if I didn't work um, on terrible football posters and posters for you know the Arizona Cardinal cheerleaders to come in and mm-hmm. or USO tours. Um, if I wasn't constantly having to create things in the secret that no one else saw, we didn't have Instagram back then. <laughs> we didn't have like blogs where we posted all of our work. Yeah. Um, if I wasn't creating all the time, I wouldn't have like experimented with things. I wouldn't have mm. created, not created, but like um, I would not have learned the techniques that I needed when I moved to Atlanta. Right. Because when I moved to Atlanta, that's that's when Louie and Shelley. Um, started freelancing. I started freelancing for Passion at the right. time, mm-hmm. and I think it was those five years that I worked for the Army that really set me up to be able to step into a hole that was missing at right. Passion. Right. So those five years, I guess you were heading in, sort of heading in a direction of of creating. Yeah. But not in the sense of um, albums at that point. Right. So then it was it. Was it just this natural? It just happened. You sort of moved to Atlanta. It was all great, and you know. They, yeah, they hired I wish. you. And <laughs> I definitely wish. that role? I, I moved to Atlanta and I just started freelancing. So I freelanced for North Point Community Church, which yeah. is Andy Stanley's church, um, for Passion, for Six Steps Records, which is our label team, and Buckhead Church. I had a lot of friends that worked in different ministries right. and they would just contract me out to do different projects. Uh-huh. And it wasn't probably until, I would say, eight months after I moved to Atlanta that Shelly sent me an email and said, hey, let's talk about what this could look like in the future. Right. I think she knew, she and Louie knew that they were going to be planning a church and there was something in the future that they would need someone to help steer and guide with them. Yeah, right. The um, reason I asked the questions, obviously, is because, um, for example, in my life, I look to the future and I think it's just going to be one, two, three, you know, mm-hmm. walk out the steps, I can see the steps. It's going to be a very straight line yeah. to the dream. And then it ends up it's being, it's four, five, six, seven, eight, and then maybe nine, ten, and, and 12, 13, and... 11 in there somewhere, yeah. um, you know, it's a meandering sort of pathway towards what it is you have in your heart to do. Yeah, and I feel like my story, I've, I liken it to the story of David because when I first came to Atlanta in 1999 mm-hmm. and held that passion album and just decided this is what I want to do with my life, I actually moved back to California uh-huh. and went through a season where I just kept asking God, can you please move me to Atlanta, like help me get involved somehow, mm-hmm. like this is what I feel like you're calling me to do. Mm. And I just felt like there was a no, like not yet mm. or just just nothing. Mm. So I had to go back to California and just work work the job with the army and just right. kept working it. Mm. And it wasn't probably for about seven years until mm. I felt that God answered my prayer of, okay, now, now is your time to go. Yeah. And so I decided to turn my resignation in to my current job and packed up my Honda Civic yeah. and drove from Los Angeles to Atlanta and and have a go at it. And I think he did that because I think if I would have left earlier, I would not have been in the right spot, you know, just spiritually, maturity-wise, and even skill-wise. Right. I could have gotten to Atlanta and thought I had everything I needed and the talents yeah. that Louie and Shelley would need from me and probably would have failed at all of that. Right. So it took him holding me back and... Um, just stay in California to really hone those skills and, and like I said before, like design in the secret places where no one saw anything and it yeah. wasn't anything of value or worth or anything to really brag about at right. all right. And, and just learn. Mm. 
We'll get right back to the episode, brought to you by our Hillsong Worship and Creative Conference, which happens in Sydney, Australia, every November. Come be a part of everything happening on site, like the exclusive collabs with practical training from our key Hillsong team. The conference has limited spaces, so if you can't make it to Sydney this year, why not join the online conference experience so you don't miss a moment of the main sessions? Find out more details at hillsong.com forward slash WCC. Now, let's get back to the episode. I'm Leighton Ching. This is my Fantastic Four. My favorite movie this year has probably been Wonder Woman. There's a lot of hesitation to that because I've seen the three movies this year (laughs) on the plane. My favorite piece of art that I've created would probably be an old David Crowder band Christmas album. And it started out with... um, we first did this like hand sketched deer and then went a completely diff- different direction when we um, mocked up David as a nutcracker and everybody loved it. it. It just felt really silly and it just fit with Crowder. And as soon as he saw himself as a nutcracker, he asked if we can design the rest of his band as nutcrackers and it ended up being the cover. So that took a long time, but it was a lot of fun to work on. In another life, I would be doing, I would be a youth pastor. That's something I'm passionate about right now, and it's not what I get paid to do, but it's something I really, really want to invest my life doing. The title of this current chapter of my life would probably be Waiting. I feel like I'm in a, I've been in a season of waiting for um, a good five years now, and not really sure what I'm waiting on, but I know that it's a season where God has me, um, whether it's my position at work, uh, in our organization, in our church, or just in my position relationally. I'm still, I'm single, and I feel like I'm in a great season of singleness, but he has me waiting for a reason. So then how do you see, you know, I, I guess with the, the work that you're doing now, mm. Lots of people probably listening would, would, they would just dream of doing any, you know, working with the artists that you're working with, working with Shelley and Louis. Yeah. And, and it sounds very glamorous and amazing and, and, and I guess world renowned. I guess, how, what would you say to people um, who are listening who are in that place of looking at that stuff and are wanting it but aren't there? Yeah. What, what, what should they do? I think it's always a journey. Uh Like, I don't think God ever, like, grabs you from one place and puts you another, and then all of a sudden you have everything that you need and you're equipped for. I think it's if you're diligently following him and seeking him and just constantly asking him how, you know, how you can be equipped for this Mm -hmm. um, and to prepare your heart and prepare your mind and your um, Mm -hmm. just your skill set, that sometimes that journey takes a long time. Right. You know, and you have to be okay with tracking along with Jesus and um, and putting in the time, the effort into managing your craft and becoming better at it. Yeah. Because I think sometimes we just want to skip all those in between steps uh-huh. and go to being, you know, the the Jays of the mm-hmm. world, mm-hmm. where you are working on incredible campaigns that mm. every church in America is copying right now. <laughs> you know, because it was just yeah. incredible. But mm. Jay had a season where he was putting in the work of mm-hmm. um, of just churning out work, and maybe it wasn't as great as he was hoping it would be. Um, but, I mean, he's been on staff for how long? Like 10 or 11 yes. years, mm-hmm. something like that. Mm-hmm. And um, But he would tell you the same thing, that mm-hmm. it wasn't instantly. Yeah. You know, it was, a, it was a long journey. And I think anyone who's in, like, your position or castes mm-hmm. um, has stories of the journey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, so then I guess I'd love to hear you, your perspective on then, I guess, faithfulness to the to the dream or the, I guess, the calling, if you want to put it that way, of yeah. God. Because yeah. obviously you had, you, you saw that jewel case yeah. years and years before. <laughs> Talk to me about, I guess, not just the journey, I did this and that, but, but the feeling of that and having, how did you remain, I guess, faithful to that and how did you keep believing that that was actually from God and keep working mm-hmm. at your craft? Yeah, I think, I think a lot of it is that if I, if I believe that God is who he said he is, yeah. and if I believe that he is for me, and I believe that that is exactly what he's putting in my heart, that this desire to marry worship and art together, then it's worth believing in him for it. Right. You know, I think if if I didn't believe one of those things, then it would be easy to, to say, well, I, I must have been mistaken, uh-huh. or I didn't hear God clearly. Right. Um, but I really wanted to believe it. And I really wanted to believe it, and I really believe that God would, you know, ultimately say what he says he, he would do. Right. 
So I think really it just boils down to like putting your faith and your trust in, in Jesus. Huh. Yeah. And you're obviously put in the work, which we talked about. Mm. Um, so now you've been doing it a long time, yeah. which begs the question, how do you stay passionate about something now that you've sort of fulfilled the dream or yeah. you're doing the dream? I think now it's looking back and saying there was, there was another name on that album before huh. mine. Yeah. Before me, there was a lady named Jan Cook and she managed all the art. Um, for passion and other artists around you. And I think she was even part of Hillsong Projects back in the day um, from the Capitol team. Right. Um, I think what I love about it is that eventually my name will come off of it and there's going to be some other young man or young lady who hopefully picks up an album that I was a part of and was inspired by it. And hopefully their journey was, you know, intersected at a certain point in life where they decided, I want to do that with my life. I would love it if one day that person is sitting in my seat and huh. getting to fulfill what they feel like God is calling them to do. Yeah. I think that's that's what keeps me passionate about that is that I want to keep creating things that hopefully inspire people yeah. and raise up people who were inspired the way I was. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, and so you, now your role is not just, you're not just on the tools all the time, right? right? You're, um, you're managing multiple sort of, um, well, what would you call it, avenues of creativity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how do you sort of personally as a, as a creative, I guess, how do you now do the managing? Or are you just naturally that way, a bit organized? and Yeah, so it's weird. Like, I, I am very organized. I think a lot of times creatives just get this really bad rap for being <laughs> unorganized and you know messy or your house is really like unkempt and things are everywhere. But for some reason, I was always very organized, yeah. uh, very clean. Like my desk is not spotless, but it's very clean. Yeah. Um, I don't like disorder. Mm. So I think just that mindset that I've always had growing up of having things in order and in their place mm. helps helps the other side of my brain of like, you know, being creative and being free with things. Mm. Um, yeah, that's it. Yeah, right. I guess I would tend to be the same. Cass and I are quite different in that way. She, she would be the classic, <laughs> don't tell her I said this, yeah. anybody, but she would be more the... Uh, the messy. You know, the like messy her stuff's everywhere. Yes. Yeah. She doesn't like to think that, but... Um, and, and I can't help it. I just like order. Um, but we're both reasonably creative, I think. Yeah. So I, th I think God can use sort of your temperament and mm -hmm. your... Um, whatever you're gifting um, to his glory, either yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting, though, to hear that you, I guess that, that makes sense, though, that you're that way because you're managing multiple things, right? So you have, um, tell us the, the, the different areas. Yeah, the, so we have Passion the City Church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We have Six Steps Records. Yeah. We have Paf Passion Publishing, yeah. which is a newer endeavor that we have. Um, and we have Passion Conferences. Right. Yeah. And so then is it, I read somewhere that there was just two of you. Is that still the case? There's three. Now. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. There's three. <laughs> okay. Which is a huge blessing for sure. Uh -huh. So we have Kendra Harrell. Mm -hmm. um, I hired her, I want to say two years ago, right. two and a half years ago. And then she was part of our house. So she served yeah. on our students' team, and her husband is a drummer on our worship team. And he also was a student leader as well. Mm -hmm. And then I hired another girl named Meg. And she was also coming up through our students' team. And right. she led a small group of girls. And her husband also is part of our. Um, our middle school, high school student ministry. Yeah, right. And so you get a lot of, um, you churn through, that's maybe a bad word, but you churn through a lot of work, get a lot of output yeah. um, for three people. Um, <laughs> really? Yeah. Is it just, um, I guess the question really is, how do you do that without it just becoming tick boxes and just, I guess, uh, a production line? Yeah, that's actually why I'm here at conference to learn, right. <laughs> to learn, you know, and glean off your team because I, I feel like we do get in that spot a lot. Uh, um, I was hoping you had the answer. No, man, Come Rich, on. that's why I'm here. <laughs> that's why I'm here talking to you. And I need to talk to Jay after this. Yeah. Um, Brooklyn, I need to talk to all of them to figure out how, how mm -hmm. in the world you make that happen mm -hmm. because we do, um, we, sometimes we do get in a rut of we're looking at our to do list and we're looking at all the requests coming through. And it, sometimes it feels like you can never you know, get through everything mm. and sign off and everything. And when you do, you look back at your to-do list and there's 30 more things added mm. just for that day. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I think, uh, who knows? If, if anyone out there knows, like, please get in <laughs> touch because it, it's really hard. Yeah. It's really hard, but you guys do an amazing job at that as well. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think that's why I'm here, to yeah. just learn from you guys because cool. you guys have pioneered the way for so long, uh, put systems in place and help shape the way a lot of people do church. Well, I hope we can help. <laughs> yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah. I think that it's, 
I mean, we're constantly talking about those sorts of issues. Yeah. And I, I guess because we want to achieve a lot for the kingdom and that means there's lots of work to do. Right. And, um, and therefore it can turn into just work. And so therefore we want to never get there. Yeah. Um, so we try to be proactive in, in, I guess, getting ahead of the feelings. Yeah. Um, but from time to time it does turn into work. And um, I guess then for, for us, I guess I know what we do, but, but when it gets there, how, do you have, I guess, a bank of creativity or do you have a, you know, are you always collecting ideas or, you know, what, what do you, what's your go-to when, it, when it's dry or feeling like work? Yeah, I feel, I feel like we do have a bank of just things that inspire us, right. um, whether it's people or films or videos or even just beautiful typography like what you had up there on your stage today, um, mm -hmm. just in a lot of your presentations, the beautiful lettering, mm -hmm. we do draw a lot from that. Yeah. But a lot of it is just praying. And I think sometimes I joke about this a lot because I say sometimes I just cry, mm. yeah. <laughs> which is not the, like the most masculine thing to do. <laughs> but <laughs> sometimes you just say, God, like sometimes I'm so frustrated because I, I know that God already already knows the end result. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason he's withholding that. Yeah. I think maybe to teach us a lesson, right? Of of like pursuing him uh -huh. and just really be open to the Holy Spirit and how it's gonna how he's gonna lead us. Yeah. Um, and so a lot of it really is prayer. Yeah. It's praying and asking for the intervention of God um, to just give us some creativity. And sometimes he does. Sometimes um, it's really easy, and you just get the snapshot of oh, this should be this, mm -hmm. and it ends up working out and everyone signs off on it and everyone's happy. And then sometimes you think it should be this and then it's a struggle mm -hmm. and you can't quite nail it. Yeah. And you just think, man, we need to start all over again. And that's when you go back and say, God, like, let's do this. Cause I know, I know, you know, the final result and I know you want that final result. So like get us to a place where that's possible. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, I feel like, um, your story is one of faithfulness obviously to God, but faithfulness to um, just believing that he has what he has for you, yeah. even in that little story. You know, I feel, feel like um, in the dryness, in the looking for ideas, what you're saying is um, you're trusting God that he'll come through yeah. you know, and being faithful to believing that he'll come through. Yeah. And, and that's the, the macro and the micro of what you're saying in your right. story. Um, I'm encouraged by it. So awesome. I think other people listening will be too. Thanks so much for coming in. And I think we have to do this again because yeah. we've got heaps more questions. <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Awesome. Do it. All right. Thanks heaps. Thanks, Rich. Well, that was a fun time getting to know Leighton a little bit better. As I said in the interview, I've known him from a distance for a long time. So it was great to sit down, have an opportunity to actually ask about his journey. And I learned a lot through the journey. Um, things like being patient and being open to all that God has for us. There's always more to people than you really meets the eye, isn't there? Um, you see someone's artwork and then you realize that there's a whole journey going on and a whole call of God on, on a person's life that you may or may not know about. And there's always more to someone than meets the eye. Anyway, let's move now to the story of the week for the 100 Day Creative Challenge. Well, Psalm 122, a Psalm of Ascent, and talks about all of the tribes coming up to Jerusalem, all of them ascending to Jerusalem, all of the tribes, they go to worship and to praise their God. And I, I love that picture of worship. Uh, worship always brings unity. It always brings community. And I love that our church, we, we gather all the tribes, all the denominations, all the people who are, who are followers of Jesus, who are, who are Christians. And when we gather in that one place and we look away from ourselves and look Christward, regardless of race, gender, age, or whatever background you have, whatever church denomination you're a part of, there is unity and community as we gather. And my favorite quote ever, probably, by A.W. Tozer, The Pursuit of God, says, Has it ever occurred to you that 100 pianos, all tuned to the same fork, are automatically tuned to each other? They are of one accord by being tuned not to each other, but to another standard to which each one must individually bow. So 100 worshippers met together, each one looking away to Christ, are in hearts nearer to each other than we could ever possibly be were we to become unity conscious. 
lives. That's what worship does. We look away from our differences and we look to Christ and it brings unity in the body. It brings community amongst people. Well, that's it for today's episode. We hope you enjoyed it. If you'd like to subscribe, you can do that on iTunes, YouTube, or SoundCloud. And I'd encourage you to do that so you can be a part of the journey with us. We'd love to hear from you too. So if you want to give us your comments, do that on our Instagram. It's at HillsongWCC.